So what is salicylic acid? As you can see here in the structure, it's a phenolic acid. It's also called the beta hydroxy acid. The salicylic acid, when used topically, has a very specific and interesting function. It is a keratonic, as a keratonic ingredient, which means it's peeling, it's exfoliating, it's separating the top layers of the skin and allowing the new and fresh layers to be exposed. So this is the basic function. There are other functions. It's also antibacterial and so on. But the basic structure is its ability to exfoliate. It causes shading of the outer layer of the skin. So it's used in cosmetic for the following claims. Smoothing, rejuvenating, brightening, toning, diminishes wrinkles and resurfacing. So you understand it's more than acne. In dermocosmetics and pharmaceutical, dermaceutical, we are talking about salicylic acid as an ingredient to treat acne, dandruff, uh, removes of cones, calluses, and valves. But in a cosmetic, and this is our focus, salicylic acid has multiple uses. I repeat what I just said. It's used to smooth the skin from any kind of um, issues that one may have. Rejuvenate the skin, in other words, expose and younger looking skin. Brighten, it's the best product to brighten the skin. Toning, toning the color, which means make the color homogeneous on the surface of the skin. And of course, by exfoliating, you can diminish the fine lines the wrinkles, and you can surface the skin. So there are multiple applications for salicylic acid, not only acne. And therefore the dosage will change, depends on the application. Now what is the challenge for us as chemists when we want to use salicylic acid in a formula? And you can see in this picture, the number one challenge is the water solubility. You can dissolve salicylic acid in water at 0.2%. In addition to this, the low acidity, the pKa is 2.97. In other words, if you are able to dissolve it by using ingredients such as alcohol or harsh surfactant, you still have to address the issue of the very low pH. So practicality, difficult to dissolve. Use-wise, the pH is too low, it irritates the skin. So how can we bring a benefit when we are irritating the skin? This is the challenge, okay? This is the challenge. What is the solution for this is a technology that based on encapsulating the salicylic acid and encapsulation has to be specific for the application and enable them to disperse the salicylic acid and slowly release it. The assumption and the clinical data shows that if we release it slowly, the same dosage but slowly, then the skin is able to balance and buffer it. So getting the full amount, but in small dosage, is the key to make it happen. Now, let's go back to multisal salicylic acid. As a principle, you see on the left side, you see the structure of multisal with the submicron in uh, the core. And if we look at the single cell, uh, submicron, if cell sphere, we can see the typical structure of cell sphere. On the right side, you see an SEM showing you the structure. And this is a patented technology. We cover, it covered by multiple patents. Here I'm only providing two. So this is a proprietary technology. And now let's start to understand how does it work and how it can benefit us. So this is the steps in which multi-cell salicylic acid 
is breaking down to release the functional ingredients. The first thing that has to happen, the multicell has to be exposed to water. It could be outside water, the skin has a moisture, and the shell will break down. The shell can break down either very fast or very slow, depends on the thickness of the layer and the composition of the shell. Once the shell is broken, dissolved, then the submicron will release and the submicron will function. You can see here in a scanning electron microscope, a picture number one is the full microsphere. Then number two is we approach it with water. You see that the shell is dissolving and multiple of submicrons are starting to release. And number three, you see again a picture of a microsphere with the submicron sphere inside. So the limiting factor to start the release is water. The slow release is, as, is resulting from the fact that the submicron stick to the skin because of hydrophobic forces. The submicron is hydrophobic lipid and the skin is lipid. So they stick to each other. Once they stick, then the submicron slowly breaks down, dissolves like oil dissolving fat, dissolve in the skin and gradually release the salicylic acid. This is the mechanism of release. Now, let's talk about a specific application and this is medicated sobao. So you may be familiar with but SOBAO, uh, especially medicated SOBAO, are gaining popularity. Here you see one, and this is an antibacterial SOBAO. Uh, here we see another one. This is an anti-dandruff SOBAO. So it's used as a shampoo. And here is an antifungal SOBAO. So there are multiple SOBAO. The issue is now we wanted to have an anti-acne SOBAO. So once you understand that SOBAO is made of alkaline material, the pH is pretty high, and it's not compatible with acid. Or let's say any acid is not compatible in the soap bow because they can react to each other and counteract each other. So number one, in terms of features that we are looking for, is the stability protect the acid from reacting with the alkaline base. This is number one feature. Then we are looking for release it, but the release is triggered with water. So every time we wash and we use the bow, we expose water, at that time, we want the release of the functional ingredient, the salicylic acid. When we get the soap to be dry, at that time, we have no interest to release and lose any of the salicylic acid. So once it's released, we're looking for time release. I explain it again, we want a prolonged release. In other words, we want to have small dosages of salicylic acid release on the skin. And so they could provide us the exfoliation process gradually so the skin can balance can balance it and counteract it so we don't get the dry and the redness on the skin. So this is the purpose of using multicell salicylic acid in a soap bow. Let me bring you directly to the end. This technology gained a lot of success and you can see here one of the luxury product. It's a luxury beauty medicated bow with the purpose to treat people with sensitive skin that have acne. The multicell technology was able to provide the following benefits. Number one, it transformed a commodity soba to a medicated status. The value increased at least 10 times in terms of price in the market. At least 10 times just because adding the technology. The technology enabled to stabilize 2% salicylic acid 
which granted this product to become an anti-acne product, medicated anti-acne. Then it's found to be compatible with a beauty base. Uh, it's compatible with the process to produce soap bars. And after all, it is a technology that triggers the release with water. And that's the major benefit of this story. So even at the last drop of the soap, you still have the full amount of the functional ingredients and it's active to do the job. Now let's go to step by step to see how did we reach this point. I need to check here something. Okay, so how did we reach this though? The first one is stability. So stability can be measured in different ways. Um, we use microscopy because the major concern was if we produce the soba with an extrusion process and pressure a stamping process, do we still have the microspheres survive the process? So we took slices from the soap bar and analyzed them under the microscope. Sometimes we use a pigment to color the beads to make them more visual. And you see on the left side, pictures from uh, the slices of the soap and other picture of a slice of the soap that was incubated for three months at 50 degrees C and we see that the particles are there. In other words, multisal can survive easily the process of extrusion, not the pressure and not the temperature and not the soap itself can dissolve. In a typical beauty soap, there is about 10 to 20% water. The water in the soap did not dissolve the particles. So from all points of view, we confirmed that the multisal survived successfully the process of manufacturing and the stability after that. Okay, so then we went into the uh, deposition studies. In the deposition, we had a group of panelists that washed their arms with soap containing the free, uh, which is, um, glycerin soap, but we used it as a control. And then we extracted the salicylic acid from the skin. For that purpose, we used a cup, a glass cup, standard glass cup, in which we inserted like two to three, uh, I don't remember exactly the volume, I think it's like three ml of alcohol. And we make the alcohol uh, we put the cup in such a way onto the arm so it can extract the skin. And then we took the sample and we analyzed it with HPLC and we got the following data. The following data uh, is telling you how much multisal, excuse me, how much salicylic acid is being extracted on the Y axis compared to how much ethanol we needed to use in order to extract it. So what you see is with the free salicylic acid, uh, with increasing amount of alcohol, we could extract only about 1.15%. Uh, However, we could extract a much higher volume of with uh, a hands that was washed with multisal salicylic acid. Means that we got a higher deposition on the skin when we use salicylic acid. So this was the test to demonstrate on a clean clinical con conditions in vivo on the skin that with multisal we can deposit at least two to three times more salicylic acid than with the free. Okay, now we are looking at efficiency. Does it work? Does it do the job? And the job was designed the number of pimples on the face. We had a group of panelists and we measured over two weeks the number of pimples on the skin. So you see here on the top, a time zero of one of the panelists and over the two weeks. We compared now 
the reduction in the number of blemishes in percent when we compared here, we did many comparisons, but I will show you the bottom line. We compared here 2% free, okay? 2% free compared to only 0.5% when used multisal. So 2% is the maximum allowed for OTC. 0.5% is the minimum allowed for OTC. And it could be correct also to use it as a cosmetic for anti-blemish. And what you see here is with the 0.5%, we got about two and a half times more efficacy compared to 2%. So practically it means that one could use a cosmetic dose and get better results than the free salicylic acid. So this is remarkable to say about the ability of this technology to sustain the process, become more stable, uh, deposit, and also be effective when it's used on the skin. So this is what we see about this specific uh, product. But there were many commercial successes with Multisal, and I will share with you only a few um, for example, a multi-cell salicylic acid is used in makeup. Makeup that is designed for people with an acne-prone skin, which means the level is cosmetic dose, like 0.5% and below salicylic acid. Salicylic acid, um, excuse me, multi-cell salicylic acid, also used commercially for low-cost medicated bowel. Low cost means only 0.5% salicylic acid. And you see the claim on the box says that fights acne 300 times longer. This is based on the numbers that we got in our clinical data. So this just shows that major brands adapted this technology. Here are some other product with salicylic acid that have a value. This all this is a stick, a wout stick. Here is another stick to treat corn um, on the foot. Uh, this all based on exfoliating the skin. Here is another foot care powder that using the salicylic acid for the same purpose. So salicylic acid in the multicell form. Uh, in the multicell form is easily to be mixed in with simple blenders. This is blenders that we have in our facility. You see the, difficult, the different um, blenders available to mix um, powders into the finished product. This is a V blender, it's another one. And it's easily to be incorporated in extrusion process. This is a typical extruder. And in the top, you see uh, how we are mixing the powder into water-based formulation. So Multisal also has applications uh, with um, water base. Yes, correct. Multisal contain 30% salicylic acid. That's the content of the active in Multisal. So, so far, I'm sure you are following me. You understand that multisal uh, salicylic acid is a unique technology. It's a proprietary that delivers salicylic acid to the skin effectively. It's safe to be used and even for sensitive skin and it's very skin friendly. So um, this is a little bit of information uh, about Multisal salicylic acid, and I hope you learned something new in this presentation.